good Filipino morning to everybody. Derek with Q Adventures here. Today we're gonna uh, stop by Bataan. Um, yesterday we were trying to get Joseph and his uh, tribe leaders, the Eta, Eta uh, tribe leaders, to uh, get on camera, but we had a little ordeal, right, Jay? <laughs> but we'll talk about that ordeal uh, another time. But uh, uh, we tried to reschedule with um, uh, the tribe leaders um, just to get them on camera today, but um, their schedule wasn't available, so we did it tomorrow. So we're going to take advantage of today to go to Bataan. Uh, I looked up online at the refugee camp. The refugee camp currently is uh, permanently closed uh, since it was closed in the 1990, I believe. And uh, before we head there, we're gonna head to, we're gonna look for some breakfast. Looks like everything is closed, so we're gonna go to the bougie, bougie. Starbucks, have a coffee, and <laughs> in the Subic Bay right here, which is by the Subic Bay Gateway Park, right across the street. So, um, just gonna hang out and see if we can uh, grab a bite for breakfast before we head to Bataan to the refugee camp. Um, there is a museum there talking about the uh, boat people from Vietnam so we're up at the refugee camp where my family and I was at back in 1986 87 I don't remember precisely the date it looks nothing like this uh, back then of course because uh, there were just rows of uh, I guess makeshift huts similar to you know like um, the house that Marilyn um, you know um, that we did the home improvement for, uh, but much smaller. Um, but now, you know, like this area, this massive development coming in here, and uh, they have, they built this museum in honor of the boat people of Vietnam, uh, the refugees of Vietnam and uh, Indo-Chinese people. And, um, Fortunately, I have a tour guide today with this security guard. What is your name, sir? Bernie Batting, sir. Bernie? Yes. Okay, Bernie. How are you doing today? Uh, doing good, sir. Good. I'm, I appreciate you taking the time. But um, I'm just trying to understand... ...my heritage a little bit without being... Um, ...emotional here. But um, I myself was not the boat people. Uh, I was sponsored over by my paternal uncle, uh, who was a boat person, uh, along with my grandfather. But these were the conditions that they were in. Um, the captains of these boats were taking gold as payment for people who want to escape the war, the citizens of Vietnam, the residents of Vietnam, to escape the war. And they shove just, you know, as many people as possible into these little fishing boats. Um, that puts a lot of weight into it and the boat is not seaworthy, but the, the whole idea is uh, because it was an active war um, they just want to be on the boat, you know, without thinking about their safety or concerns about, you know, like anything. Uh, it was just to them in their mind, uh, at that time, it was, uh, safer to put themselves in these kind of position than to stay back in Vietnam, uh, during an active war. And a lot of these people do not survive and um, if they fell ill or something like that um, they are viewed as dead weight or potentially carrying some kind of um, contagious disease and um, so they just become third weight uh, I'm sorry dead weight and um, sadly enough they would just uh, be thrown overboard to be fish food, uh, for a lack of better word, and um, the Indo-China War. So uh, I, I remember vividly, although I was only seven to eight years old, uh, that our refugee camp was structured, you know, like uh, the Vietnamese people who came from Vietnam stayed in one section, 
and then um, uh, a separate section row of homes were the Laotians, and then a separate row will be the uh, Cambodians. So this is very well structured. Yeah, this is very. Uh, look at the conditions that. That's for the boat people. Yes. Almost 18,000 uh, 18, refugees for schooling here. Alternate. After six months uh, schooling, I go to Canada, California. The Filipino, uh, Filipino government helping all refugees affected uh, in the Vietnam War. In the Vietnam War. I've just been silent because um Victory Liner processing this is a uh actual photo of uh houses. Yeah. Uh, piece one, piece two, piece three. This is houses. This, uh, yeah. yeah, these are the houses that were built for the refugees, but I don't remember it. Um, structured this way, maybe it's just different in photo than what a uh, seven-year-old memory, uh, seven-year-old's memory was. But um, this is a monkey house. Monkey oh. house, monkey business. What is monkey house? Monkey house, monkey business. Because uh, the houses is uh, in the case of violation, like uh, riot. Uh, oh, like pretty much a small jail. Yes. So this is to house refugees that misbehave. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember this. Of course, my family was uh, well behaved. So fortunately, we didn't have to endure this. But um, as you can see, this uh, space is uh, very extremely small. Um, with my back to the wall. You know, my arm is bent and I can uh, touch the, the other side of the wall. Of course, this is just a little small toilet area. Uh, no toilet here, but this is a, just a, a replica. But... From Norway. From Norway, this is a bunk house. The bunk house is... Oh yeah, these are the bunk houses that my... Oh yeah, this is it. This is a actual photo. Oh, yeah. In Vietnam, yeah. Yeah, this is what I remember. This is how I, I remember it. The bunkhouse um, is like this and extremely small. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is how I, I, I remember it vividly. Uh, the bottom has a bed like this. And then um, on the top, yeah, the cooking area back here. Uh, but I remember mine was uh, um, the, the one that I occupied. Uh, my family and I was open, and it, um, it, it leads to the back. Can I climb up there? They have a door here, honey. Am I allowed to go up there? Yes. It's allowed? Okay. This one is a door. This is a window. Uh, this one. Yeah. Kitchen. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, yeah, go. good for uh, six packs, six uh, person. Yeah, there's four of us: my father, yeah. my mother, my sister, and myself. But um, there's an upstairs sleeping area, almost like camping style. Yeah. So uh. That's why I asked you because this one I remember because when I was so young, we used this in cabins. So that's why I asked. 
Oh my god, this is uh, exactly how I remembered it. But of course, the condition of the house that I. that my family lived in is um, in a lot worse condition than this, a lot of wear and tear, because we were in the tail end of it in 1987 ish. Uh, these. This refugee camp was uh, erected in 1980s, uh, even, and then it closed down in 1990. This refugee camp camp stopped 1990, right? 95. Yes, last 1995. All uh, refugees transferred to Coron Palawan. Uh huh. Yes, the Coron Palawan is uh, last last stop. Uh, yes, stop lang area. Okay. So 1995, uh, this is, uh, refugee uh, camp stopped. People escaped from Vietnam. Yeah. From Natrang City, Vietnam. Yeah. So this is the boat. Uh, but is this boat reconstructed or was it recovered? Recovered. This is it was recovered, recovered yes, boat. In 1980s. It's um, May 12, 1981. Okay, this uh, boat. A of 34 men, 20 women, 11 children in Mabayo Beach Resort. Yeah. From uh, Natrang City, Vietnam. This is a much bigger boat than what most people uh, endure. Uh, from the photos that I showed you earlier, the, uh, the boats are um, much smaller, a majority of them, but just whatever boats that were available, big or small, uh, during a time of war, you know, was just made available and uh, opportunists, captains of these boats. Um, you know, the word opportunist is uh, pretty, uh, it has a negative connotation to it. Uh, it just suggests greed and stuff like that. A lot of times, you know, like uh, out of the de from the demand uh, of the citizens of Vietnam who wants to escape, you know, it, it was just a, simply a service that was provided. You know, there weren't any liability waivers or anything like that. It was just either you get on the boat and go or not. There's no waiting. There's no schedule. It was. Um, you know, the captain and the, the lookouts have to look out for, you know, like a, a, a lack of soldiers, uh, the, 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 the northern Viet Congs. Um, just danger in general, you know, like when the opportunity exists, they will just uh, jump on the boat and go. And uh, they just, from my understanding of uh, the backstory from my father and grandfather, you know, it's just like they didn't have a point B. They just wanted to, you know, like uh, get in the ocean, you know, international water. And uh, and just basically there's no plans. They were just crossing the fingers to be uh, discovered by the American Navy uh, and American forces and uh, uh, to be rescued. And uh, so they can seek asylum under... Uh, these kind of stressful um, situations. So, you know, it, there, there wasn't any plans. There wasn't anything, you know, like long drawn out, you know, like if you give me one bar, one ounce of gold and uh, this is what we're going to do and this is where we're going to go. Uh, none of that. It's just, you know, you, you pay your dues to get on the boat and uh, wherever the boat goes, goes. It just drifts. Um, so, yeah, as you can imagine it, you know, it's just uh, a lot of people have lost their lives. And, um, my parents and I and my sister were supposed to be on these boats also, uh, but because, again, you know, to the best of my recollection, um, I was only two months old uh, when the when, when my my grandfather and um, uh, pater, you know father's side of the family you know decided to 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 jump on these boats and pay their dues to jump on these boats, I was only two months old, and my uh, parents because of me I dragged them behind you know like uh, made the mobility very slow and uh, uh, they missed their opportunity, um, but you know if they if I was a little bit older. And, um, and and they, they took the opportunity to jump on that boat. I wouldn't know if I would be here uh, this day. Um, we might have died, you know, in the middle of the ocean. 
uh, we might have been just a statistics that you know nobody would ever um, record and all the potentially bad things that can happen it's just um, uh, but the you know it happened the way it did and even though uh, my 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 family was sponsored over through a um, family unification petition with the American immigration we were still somehow uh, labeled as refugees and um, when it, when our time came we flew from Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City as we know it today um, we flew from Ho Chi Minh City to Thailand for two weeks processing where we were held in a Thai prison uh, we were not prisoners they just for clarification purposes they emptied out a section of the prison to house us refugees along with the Cambodians and the Laotians and um, after two weeks of processing um, we flew from Thailand to uh, Philippines Bataan at this very location where I am now so uh, we spent six months here for I guess westernization or education however you want to refer to it uh, before you know and then get processed uh, before we were flown to Los Angeles California so this is the story of my very first introduction to the Philippines. So this is the first visit, uh, which is the museum, and this is um, uh, it really jogs my memory. And uh, again, you know, it's just uh, I'm, I'm super emotional here. Yeah. So this shrine was uh, built by the Cambodians in 1982, um, in that region where Vietnam, Cambodia, and uh, Laos is. Um, Buddhism is. Um, the dominant religion or uh, belief. This is our culture, and this is a very Cambodian uh, Buddhist shrine where um, there are, you know, multi um, dimensional faces. Um, although I was born in a uh, my, my my parents practice Buddhism and my mom is pretty um, hardcore you know like I, I um, grew up rebellious and did not follow the teachings so this uh, shrine was built before my my time in the Philippines my family's time in Philippines I don't have a re recollection of this uh, shrine but it is a very uh, humbling experience to stand here and it's just uh, overwhelmed with emotions. This is uh, the place of worship of the Vietnamese people. And um, although they're all essentially Buddhism, you know, each re uh, region has a slightly different uh, belief system. And uh, because within the Buddhist, as I know it, I am no expert or anything like that. But um, Each region has a slightly belief system and um, because the religion itself has so many, uh, I guess, godly or saint figures or angelic figures um, and each of these uh, god figures or angelic figures, you know, like represent different things. So each culture uh, choose to follow you know like uh, one teaching over you know or favor one teaching over um, another 
So with the Vietnamese, you know, like uh, we follow the uh, Quan Yin a little bit more, the goddess. And um, don't worry, it will pass. Everything does. Uh, these little philosophical phrases. I hear a body of water down there. I'll walk these grounds. And uh, there's a lot of deterioration. Uh, due to abandonment, so uh, look at the background where uh, Guan Yin is standing. It's uh, just absolutely beautiful. And uh, that is the very river that my dad along with a lot of neighbors took me down to and that's the very river that I learned how to swim in I wish I had some uh, incense here to uh, pay my respect but once again uh, I came very ill-prepared, not anticipating a Buddhist shrine here. And it's a shame. That nobody uh, upkept this. And it looks like uh, there were some recent visitors. Perhaps with a uh, renaissance of incense sticks. So what, um, with the development of the military, the Filipino uh, Marine, yes, um, what will happen to this area? This area is, this is na, ongoing process. This na belong in the 150. Oh, so it doesn't belong? Yeah. So yeah. this area will be preserved? Yes. Um, so there's no upkeep here. Has anybody or any... Um, uh, charitable organizations came and offered to upkeep this place and preserve this place? Uh, maybe, sir, that, that your concern is uh, uh, you suggest in the, in the busy day office. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so the office environment. Yeah. yeah, because it's sad to me that, no, especially this place, you know, it's a sacred yeah. Yeah. area. Yeah. And uh, to see all this right here. You know, in disrepair, it's just... Because, uh, because, uh, this area, they manage the Philippine government. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philippine government. Of course. And I know funding and everything is a big part of it, but... He wants to... to renovate this... This... Uh, this temple. Who wants to? What did you say? Who who wants to renovate this Buddhist temple? No, sir. If 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 you want to, if you have a foundation for the for this uh, building or this uh, Buddhist temple, you want to renovate. You talk first in the BCD office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, yeah, that's what I'll for do. For your plan. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll talk to them. It's just. Uh, it's 
just falling apart. Thank you all very much for tuning in today. This uh, video has a special place in my heart, obviously. And um, thank you for your continued support on my channel and all your positive feedbacks. Until next time, ciao.